guys, so this video is actually the first in what will hopefully be a series on my channel of study tip videos, so we'll call this study tips number one and they're always going to be on various different topics that may relate to you at university. Some of them will be more specific to certain areas and some of them will just be more broad tips and just kind of how I got through my undergrad, postgrad and I'm now conducting my PhD. Thought a fun one to start with would be to talk about stationery. Some of these tips may even be useful for those of you that just love stationery, like to be organised, like to find new ways to organise your information, etc, etc. And what I'm going to do in this video is simply talk you through the different types of stationery I used during the different phases of my university education and I'm still using now, how I use them, why I found them useful, that kind of thing. Like I said, it should be quite fun, I'm just going to talk about loads of stationery basically, which I love. I love watching videos about stationery, um, but hopefully through talking about stationery uh, I will be able to give you some organisation tips and maybe if you've been working one way with your stationery and it hasn't been working for you, you'll find a new way to work with your stationery from this video. I've kind of through the years found the things that have worked best for me through trial and error. I'm going to start with the very basics and that is attending lectures. Uh, I hate taking notes on my computer and I pretty much exclusively hated the people that took notes on their computer. Firstly because the noise of typing is incredibly irritating, I found people's laptops were more likely to obstruct my view of the lecturer, I pretty much observed that everybody on their computer and the few times I tried to use my computer in first year, um, Everyone's just on Facebook. Nobody is listening. It's so much harder to engage and listen to your lecture if you're on your computer. And you might tell me, no, I don't go on Facebook. I don't Google stuff with lecturers talking. Um, well, you're in the minority. <laughs> and even if for a split second you think, I'll look something up so I can understand something better, you're more likely to lose track of things. And I also find things go into my head better if I write them down by hand than if I type them. I think I can type a lot more mindlessly than I can write things down and if I ever wanted a typed up version of my notes at a later date I would then just type up the written notes I've taken. I understand in some circumstances typing can be better for some people but I'm not one of those people and I expect at least 80% of you aren't either so the way I take notes was I started by doing what a lot of people do taking big kind of pick a pad type um, notepads with big sections and I'd have a different section for each of my courses. This is really old. This, um, I found it very cumbersome, heavy to carry around um, and I just ended up figuring out that this wasn't the way I like to take notes. For some people it's great. What I ended up settling on and then used for years and worked best for me was jotters. It almost felt like a little bit regressive, like I was going back to high school and primary school when we used jotters in classes, but you know what, there's something to be said for a good jotter. And I would take a jotter per course, so say if during a term I was doing a ancient novel course and early and archaic Greek art and archaeology course and a um, Hellenistic world course, I'd have a jotter for each. And yeah, on occasion I would end up with two jotters because I'd go past the capacity of this jotter. I used, to, I used to love these jotters, they come in packs of three and they're done by Moleskin and I could usually get a student discount off them in Paper Chase, but Paper Chase do do their own jotters as well, which are these are a few that I used from Paper Chase and I noticed recently in uh, Tiger they had some really nice jazzy jotters as well that were pretty inexpensive, but I don't really need any jotters right now. Um, so jotters ended up being the thing I liked the best to take my notes in. It also meant when it came down to revision, if I was just revising for one topic that day, I only had to carry around the jotter for that topic. They're very compact, easy to carry around. But I really liked having jotters that had all the information that I had learned in. But I expect if you're writing a lot, you're going to need something to write with. So um, I am a massive fan of the classic pencil case. Um, don't be that person that does never have stationery and has to borrow it from other people. But more importantly, what's inside my pencil case um, is generic pens, generic pencils, highlighters, you can't go anywhere without a highlighter. But what I, I think I really liked was um, coloured pens. 
So I find coloured pens incredibly useful, um, not only for colour coordinating, um, so you can obviously actually kind of create a system using your colours, but just for kind of changing things up. So if I was taking notes from a book, which I'll show you an example, I would see here, I would take notes on what the article or book had said in one colour, I'd make observations of my own in another colour, I'd make citations in another colour, that kind of thing. But not only that, I would just separate up the books. So like this book I was writing in that colour, another book I would write in a different colour, um, then another colour, and it meant when I'm flicking through looking for one book where one book's notes end and another book's notes start, it was super easy because I was like, oh the colours change, this might be something else interesting. And I just think it's nicer to look at. So I didn't use these to take lecture notes but I was a massive fan of the colour pen, these are by Stadler for um, doing research on essay notes. Other than colour pens though, I am never ever without sticky tabs. These are like my favourite piece of stationery ever, seems simple but they are, they're amazing. Um, for example, here's a book that I was reading for my PhD recently, um, Rape in Antiquity, edited by Susan DC and Karen Pierce. And as you can see, I have tabbed the heck out of this. I am not very good at colour coordinating, so none of these are like blue means something, orange means something else, but they're just tabs on things that are important. I might, pages I might want to go back to, things that um, I wanted to remember were there. Highlighted passages, we've got pencil writing here of things that I was thinking whilst I was reading it. Definitely highlighters as well, but sticky tabs are the way forward in my opinion. I don't go anywhere without sticky tabs. These tabs at the top mark the beginning of each new article in this book. So since I've got it on me, let's talk about notepads. Now just like I like to have a, a jotter per class, I like to have separate notebooks for essays or terms. Every term I would have essays for different classes for the end of each term and I always had to have a notebook which would be for um, kind of research notes for my essay. Again you can type a lot of this, you can copy and paste a lot of this but I found the most productive way for me was to write everything down. So say I was reading something like this, Greek and Roman historiography, I would have a notebook like this I'd be taking notes from the whole time. And it would look like this, it can look a bit messy and um, these are just notes from secondary, from secondary material and not just that but also from primary material. So here I was reading and looking for um, text for an essay I was writing about trade and economics in Ptolemy Ptolemaic Alexandria. So here I have like primary sources I would use and also this is an article by Fraser and um, these are all just like quotes and observations and points I wanted to include in my essay or that I thought were relevant to what I was doing. Yeah, I used this for a couple of essays so that was all in there. Um, I changed notepads all the time so a different um, term I was using this notepad which is from Daycraft which I think is gorgeous. My Watersons used to stock these but I don't think they do anymore and um, this is a moleskin. So here I was writing a um, didactic poetry essay about Lucretius. The other thing I would do is make a note of everything from an article that I thought was relevant in case I needed to come back to it, remember, because you can quite often I find read essays and articles and books and remember it said something but then when you're coming to write the essay think I'm sure I read something where did I read it? Oh what was that point or make a point in your essay but think who said that because you need to make sure you cite things properly or um, you're going to get done for plagiarism um, even by mistake. So this is where I could go back, find who said it, do all my preliminary research for an essay and then sit down to write it and I had everything I needed and I didn't need to carry around a pile of articles and books, it was all in here and then I was just like tick it off when I'd used that source, when I'd mentioned it, and that means when I was going through it again I could see the things I hadn't discussed, points I hadn't discussed, um, and I wouldn't necessarily use it all, but um, it was good to have it all in here. And then I worked on my dissertation in a very similar fashion, so this is my postgrad dissertation notebook. Like I showed you with my colour coding, this is when I really figured out how much I liked write using coloured pens, um, every article or chapter in a book got its own dedicated note taking pages with the most important stuff that I thought was relevant to my dissertation and that I might want to cite at a later date and include in my dissertation. It meant, especially if you're writing a dissertation, you're going to want to know 
what scholars are saying on the topic you're writing about, you're going to really need to show that you've read a lot and that you know what the arguments are for both sides, who you agree with and who you dis didn't disagree with, and making notes in a book like this about um, the articles I was reading meant I could basically go back and kind of see, so that was Cohen's stance on these things, that was Glazebrook's stance on these things, um, that was Harris's stance, and if you find something one place, and I'm going to do a video all about using scholarship and citations, if you find an opinion in one book, so somebody thinks one thing, and cite it, it's not going to look half as good as if you've found that opinion in multiple books, and you cite that you've read all of these things. They want to know that you understand that this isn't just one person's opinion, that this is a academic argument that lots of people have followed. So. I think writing things down is a good way to go, so I have a lot of notepads. <laughs> and in a similar vein, I had this notepad which was for my um, Greek class. Now this is my grammar book. Now I think if you're studying a language, especially in the beginnings, um, you want to make one of these and it's going to be something you're probably going to keep around for the entirety of your life and refer to it. This is my ancient Greek grammar book and I like this, it's from Paper Chase and I liked it because it's got little sections. So I could section everything off. So the first tab I have here um, is grammar to do with nouns. So I had like the basic things that you need to know and might want to refer back to, like the definite articles. I would then have the different type of noun declensions. I'd have all the different variations of nouns, which is a lot because Greek is not a very regular language. The rules never apply. Um, then I had a section which was all on verbs and different verb endings. It was really good to have this to refer back to if I was like, oh, oh my god, I can't remember what the second person plural ending of an alpha contracted verb is. And I could go to my little book and be like, oh yeah. I think one of these is vital if you do Greek. I had made this previously while studying a Greek course outside of university and when I started the course at university, this is basically the exact same thing that my um, lecturer told us all to go out and make. So take the initiative, start one of these, it will be invaluable. Now some slightly more general things again that don't have to do with note taking. The next thing I love is because I hate ring bind folders and it is a cellophane poly pocket folder. So this is a book, again I buy a lot of my stationery from Paper Chase, I think this is from Paper Chase, and it's full of poly pockets like this. So like, cellophane pockets, these are some empty ones, and um, I would just use them to store articles that I printed off, but this is all on Parmenides, wow, these are really old articles. Yeah, so this is just for storing different articles, rather than um, hole punching them and putting them in a ring binder, you can just pull them out. If you're travelling, you can just take the ones that are relevant to you at the time, um, and rather than just having them all floating around at the bottom of your rucksack, so I think these are great. Then something that's more for revision, I find, is kind of making your own cards for revision. So this is actually a box for storing photographs, it's kind of photograph size, and I got this in Paper Chase as well, but you can get them in Ryman's as well, I've seen them, and inside it I've got a massive um, pack of these, which are just little um, note cards, and on them I would use them for revision. So. This again is from my pre-Socratic philosophy course. I've got a couple of packets of these from different courses. I don't chuck things out. <laughs> but um, these are all from pre-Socratic philosophy. When I was revising for my exam, um, I basically just used these and it was great. because um, So I'd write a philosopher on it. So here we have Anaximenes of Miletus. And I would write a card with the main points. Pythagoras didn't get a lot because apparently he's boring. They're not very expensive and they're great if you revise with friends. So I also had friends on this course and we used these to test each other. And we're almost done, but the next thing I like is a tiny notebook. I like to have a tiny notebook, especially one for making lists. I love lists. Lists work for different people. They work for me. So this is a little notebook I used to use. I'd carry it in my backpack every day and I'd make sort of like ongoing lists. These aren't like things I need to do today or things I need to do this week. These would just be things I need to do in general. And then I could tick them off and add to them as I went. And it's a very satisfying feeling, I think, to um, tick things through. And I quite often colour code, so whether it was like to do with one course or another. So this is a massive list. I have things like on this list that says stuff like make a plan for dissertation chapter one, edit chapter two, look up Greek word for bewitch. And I just have like ongoing lists and sometimes I'd write next to them what day I would have to do them by, so like Wednesday, Saturday, Friday. 
Sometimes I highlight it to say these ones are the most important ones. Again, just another piece of stationery I find useful at uni. And last but not least, is to have a diary or a day planner. I currently have a pocket one that I carry around in my bag, but I can't find it anywhere. So that's kind of awkward, because I know there's some appointments in there that I haven't written down anywhere else, so I really need to find that. And not a piece of stationery, but I'm gonna mention it, because it's an essential, especially from somebody who can tell you that last week their computer died and their hard drive got mishmashed all about, and they lost um, a couple of months worth of stuff, including film footage for a lot of YouTube videos. And that is an external hard drive. <laughs> I take this wherever I go, every time I went into uni, I'd either take this or a USB stick and back up everything I did that day. Now if you do forget this, the other thing is to email stuff to yourself. So it doesn't really work for film footage, but if you um, have written part of your essay that day, email it to yourself, make sure it's backed up. And that's the other nice thing about having everything written in paper, if I lost my computer, if I lost my hard drive, if I lost anything important on my computer because of a virus or somebody actually stole my laptop. I had everything written down, I had all the preliminary stuff written down. Writing, although a very important skill, is dependent on you having done some good research. So I like to have it all written down on paper because I live in a world where it's more sensible to put money in socks under your bed than in a bank apparently, which I don't do. But I know it's a kind of similar mentality and maybe sounds a bit old fashioned. But I hope you took something useful away from this video. It is over half an hour long, so hopefully I can edit it down to something useful. I just thought it might be fun to talk about how I use stationery and maybe you would find it helpful. So until next time guys, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.